Just about nine years ago on July 1st, 2004. Sorry, is this better? Okay, thanks. Just about nine years ago on July 1st, 2004, I woke up from surgery and found out I had stage 2C ovarian cancer and I was 40 years old. The first three and a half years were really rough. I had two recurrences, three major surgeries. The last one was a partial liver resection, five chemotherapy regimens, and a vaccine clinical trial. I have one disclosure to make. Um, it is low-grade serous, which tends to grow slowly, but also tends to be chemo-resistant. Currently, I'm enjoying a very long, unexpected third remission of actually five and a half years. The first remission was filled with anxiety. Life felt like a minefield as I tried to figure out all the right things to do and all the right things to eat. I spent a lot of time at Share, Gilda's Club, and Cancer Care, learning to find balance. There's an overwhelming amount of information out there, and the headlines don't tell us the whole story. Ovarian cancer is a very tricky disease, and a one-size-fits-all solution doesn't seem to be likely, and I'm still learning to live with uncertainty. Hope has been a very important part of my journey, and along the way, what I hope for has changed. First, I hoped that there had somehow been a mistake. Then I hoped that I could get through treatment. I hoped that I could be one of the lucky ones to get a cure. Then a recurrence happened, and I hoped for another remission, and then another. And then I hoped for stable disease. I hoped to get into clinical trials. I hoped I wouldn't drive my medical team crazy wondering about my CA-125. And I hoped to find ways to deal with side effects and manage pain. I always hoped that that next course of therapy would be the one. And I hoped that I wouldn't run out of treatment options. Now I hope that this third remission will continue. I've thought a lot about hope. And where I kind of live right now is in a place where I prepare for the worst, but always hope for the best. Hope can be fragile. It can be shattered by a single word or look from our doctors, or something we've seen on TV or read on the internet, or when we hear that someone we know has died from ovarian cancer. Yet hope can be so strong. There were times that I felt that hope was the only thing that I could hold on to. And finding hope has gotten me through some really tough times. That first recurrence was one of those really tough times. About a year after first treatment ended, one spot was found on the liver. It was devastating. It was harder than my original diagnosis because I knew the game had drastically changed. I found hope by meeting recurrent survivors. Some were in and out of remission, and there were a number of survivors who had one recurrence and then a really long next remission. Five, seven, 10, I think one person had 17 years. One's maybe 22 and still going strong. I learned that there were different treatment strategies. Some went aggressive, some were more body conserving. Some people were using clinical trials to expand their treatment options. There were different ways to live and cope. It's possible to have a recurrence and continue to enjoy your life. The second time I had a really rough time was during second recurrence when treatment failed. The disease was now in the liver. A standard treatment kept things stable for a little while, but then it stopped working. For six weeks, I had no treatment at all and went to three second opinions to try to find out what the next step should be. That gave me lots of time to think. Was this now a chronic condition? One doctor said that I would be on chemotherapy the rest of my life, so I had a Metaport placed. How much time do I have left? And what do I want to do at that time? I actually cracked a tooth early into this process and I didn't want to deal with getting a root canal and getting a crown and paying for something that I might outlive. So I actually chose to have the tooth pulled. Now I kind of wish I had gotten that implant. Um, and I also thought a lot about the worst case scenario, um, about the end. I went to some really dark places. But I found that I could still have hope about having some control over I, what I would want the end of my journey to look like. I know that I want to remain as active as possible. I want to be free from pain, and I want to continue to be me. I found hope by talking to some of my heroes, sister survivors who were managing chronic disease for a very long period of time. Not only were they living, but they were living well and maintaining a gigantic, enormous, delicious sense of humor. 
Somehow I knew that I too could find a way to live with chronic disease. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that I'm not alone. So you've probably heard in my, my story here that my key to finding hope is you. It's other survivors. Meeting other survivors to me is like an infusion of hope. Look around, there's a lot of hope in this room. Seeing so many different possibilities fills me with hope. Different ways to cope, different strategies for managing recurrent disease. There are so many ways to strive and survive. Many women with chronic ovarian cancer are living, laughing, loving, and dancing. I get to try out different options and keep what fits in my life. Um, exercise is really, really important, and I think so, so is a sense of humor. I wouldn't be here without all the hope and support I've received. And all this thinking about possibilities has helped me turn hope into action. It's improved my communications with my medical team. Knowing what's important to me has helped me have clear discussions about my treatment goals. Do I want to attend a special of, of function or travel? Do I want to keep my hair? Is it important to avoid neuropathy? Sometimes other options are possible, and sometimes they're not, but we don't know until we ask. I also got better at reporting side effects and asking for help with some things that really don't seem important, but they do impact our daily life, like sleep issues, depression, sexuality. And a desire to understand my treatment options led to research advocacy. I was more involved with treatment selection once I recurred, but I didn't feel qualified to decide. I learned more at survivor courses just like this, webinars, share programs, and ACNA conferences. Today, I place a lot of hope on evidence-based medicine. I've had amazing opportunities to attend doctor's conferences and serve on panels with researchers. We don't lack caring professionals who want to make a difference. We lack information, information that can be revealed through clinical trials. We can all make a difference, and we can all uh, wear the teal uniform. I see a lot of teal here today. I hope you've had a chance to visit some of the advocate tables out back. If you're feeling well enough, you can walk, cycle, spread awareness about symptoms, tell your story, tell your story to medical students, and help someone else on the journey. We desperately need a cure, so someday we don't have to rely on hope and luck. Connect with organizations that raise money and lobby for funding for researchers to continue the work. The foundation has their race coming up in November. November, there is a local race in Brooklyn, Knock has a race out on Long Island, and the ACNA conference and lobby day is coming up July 13th and 15th. Um, the deadline was yesterday, but they've extended it till Monday. I'm sorry to get on the soapbox, but I'll do this really fast. We got $20 million for the DOD Ovarian Cancer Research Program because women picked up the phone, they contacted their legislators, and if we don't keep picking up the phone and contacting our legislators, we're not going to get the money next year. So it's very important. If you can't make it down to the ACNA conference, there's a table out here. Um, you know, they can tell you how to sign up. Please sign up for the action alerts. You can do it from your home. It's really easy, and we all win. But anyways, I'm off the soapbox. <laughs> so in conclusion, today, as we learn more about this disease and explore strategies and options that we hope will give us more tomorrows, my hope for all of us is that we remember to savor the things that we love and to enjoy being with the people that we love and that we live today.